In this video, you'll learn basic soldering technique and safety procedures using the equipment in the undergraduate lab here at the Department of Electronic and Electrical Engineering, Trinity College Dublin. Solder is a metal alloy with a low melting point which flows easily when heated. It cools quickly and when solid gives good electrical conductivity between metal surfaces. Solder contains flux. This is a chemical that helps the solder to flow and improves conductivity by reducing oxidation on the surface of the metals being soldered together. There are two different types of solder joint, surface mount and through hole. This video will demonstrate through hole soldering only. We'll be using this digital soldering station, which has controls and a display to set the temperature of a soldering iron used to melt the solder. Set the temperature using the preset for lead-free solder. Then wait for the iron to heat up. The iron should always be kept in the holder when not in use. You should never touch the iron element as it is extremely hot when in use. Be especially careful not to touch the main power cable with the iron. The cable could melt easily, leading to risk of electric shock. To make a through-hole solder joint, first select the component you want the solder into place on the circuit board. We will use this diode. Grab some pliers from your toolkit and make a right angled bend on each leg of the diode. Push the legs of the diode through the appropriate holes in the circuit board. Make sure that the legs stick out on the same side as the little metal pads that surround the holes and bend the legs slightly so that they hold the diode in place. Make sure that the diode is pushed down as far as it can go. Now you can gently fix the board in place using a vise before making your solder joint. Fumes from solder or flux could irritate your lungs. Before you begin, ensure that your workspace is properly ventilated using a fume extractor or fan. Before making the joint, brush the tip of the iron on the golden curls to clear it of residue. Then hold the iron directly to the pad and diode lead and count to three. Next, hold your solder to the pad until it starts to melt, then take it away. The solder should flow through the hole, making good contact between the diode leg and the pad on the board. Make sure to clean excess solder from the tip of the iron before moving on to the next joint. Now that we have finished the second connection, let's remove the board from the vise and review our work. The solder should have flowed onto the metal pads on the board and onto the legs of the diode, making a good electrical connection. A good solder has a conical shape like these ones. Flip the board back again. Grab a wire cutter and trim off the legs just above the joint. Make sure to face the leg towards the desk so that it does not fly towards your face while cutting. Bad solder joints don't have a conical shape and they can cause connection problems in your circuits. If your joints did not turn out as planned, then it is a good idea to remove the component and make the joint again. You can grab a desoldering pump from your toolkit to do this. Cock the pump and melt the solder with your iron. When the solder has melted, trigger the pump so that it sucks the solder off the board. Repeat this process if there is still some solder left on the board. Then you can try again. Always remember these rules to stay safe while soldering. Always keep the iron in the holder when not in use. Never touch the iron element with your fingers. Never touch the iron off the power cable or anything else on your desk. Hold components while cutting to avoid wire flying off. Use a fume extractor or fan. Turn the soldering station off and unplug when not in use. And that's it. Now you know the basics of soldering, so you can start building your own electronic circuits.